Welcome uh, to Sky TV uh, at Sky 2019. My name is Chad Klieger. I'm sitting with a friend and close colleague, uh, Shandon Diveretti. Uh, welcome. Thank you. So uh, a lot has changed uh, this year with uh, the new data presented uh, at ECC in 2000, uh, this, um, this March uh, for uh, low risk partner as well as um, core belt data. So what do you think about the new data that's come out? So I think the, the data is groundbreaking. It's been uh, well, well anticipated to determine you know, what the effects and impact will be of transcatheter valve technology for essentially the majority of patients that are currently suffering from aortic stenosis. I think reviewing the, the Partner 3 data, we essentially now have information that essentially suggests that TAVR uh, is not only as good as surgery, but may be preferred in many patients uh, requiring treatment for symptomatic aortic stenosis. Yeah, it's definitely changed uh, the landscape as to how we uh, evaluate patients for uh, this disease state uh, and how we uh, implement uh, appropriate therapies. Uh, now this uh, therapy is, is being reviewed by the FDA and pretty soon, uh, or recently, it's actually went under uh, um, NCD uh, evaluation uh, even this past month. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? So I think uh, given the data that we now have and the experience of heart teams uh, over the past 10 years, I think it has uh, come around now time for a change in how we run our valve clinics and how we can streamline the process of making sure that patients with symptomatic aortic stenosis get appropriate access to care. I think one of the main uh, complaints with valve centers around the country has been the issue of the two surgeon rule that has been mandated by Medicare to ensure that uh, patients are adequately assessed for their risk status uh, prior to TAVR, that they were intermediate or high risk uh, for a surgical aortic valve replacement. But now with low risk data, the question is, do we need that? It's a, it's a great question. I mean, now going down from two surgeons to one surgeon, uh, does that really change the, the multidisciplinary team? And I actually think that it, it doesn't or it shouldn't. Um, it, it hopefully will strengthen the team to uh, really help make better decisions for the patient. Um, you know, the NCD change also is looking at volume requirements, and I think uh, those requirements have gone down uh, since its first uh, evolution back in, uh, or presentation back in 2012. Uh, do you think this will have an impact, a uh, change in volume requirements and maybe even access to care? I think these numbers have been highly scrutinized and carefully watched, both by existing and want-to-be centers. Uh, I think there's been a great deal of discussion and thought that's gone into the numbers that have been put uh, for public comment that are now currently under review. The numbers both suggest volume requirements both for new centers as well as for centers to maintain certification. Now, I think the, the requirement of overall 50 aortic valve procedures is reasonable. Um, and the thing to remember is that all centers that get approved uh, through this NCD will continue to have to participate uh, in the national TVT NCDR registry. Yeah, and I, I do ag agree with you that uh, even though there are a number of requirements, I think the, the key thing uh, to maintain in these programs is, is truly quality. So uh, we do know that learning there is a learning curve for this technology with operators uh, and with, uh, with uh, teams so that you know higher volume teams and operators do uh, have uh, better results and there is a learning curve, uh, but maintaining quality is, is key. So uh, for both initiating new programs and for maintaining those uh, new programs, uh, definitely it's something that uh, these registries that become that much more important. Yeah, in, in the data that's been published this past year, there, there are suggestions of a relationship between volume uh, and mortality and outcomes. But the thing to remember is that there are good low volume programs, there are bad low volume programs, but there are also good outcomes with high volume programs and bad outcomes with high volume programs. So as you mentioned, I think quality is going to be the key factor in establishing which programs stay open and, and what programs need to modify uh, their practices. Yeah, we have a lot to look forward to this year in, in the Taver space. Uh, and we want to thank everyone for, uh, for joining us today. Thank you.